let us now return to the notion of subsequence that I, sequences that I promised to define. Okay. So uh, what is a subsequence? Well, a subsequence is a way uh, to select elements of the sequence. It sounds really uh, natural. So let us consider the following definition, which uh, is, I think, straightforward from the intuition. So suppose that we have a sequence uh, uh, and, well, it could be of real numbers uh, or uh, any sequence and let and k be a strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers. And those would be the index indices that we choose to select from the sequence an. So we can uh, select parts of the sequence, right? So we could, for example, select a1 and then a100 and then a, I don't know, 350 and then a10,000, etc. So in each such selection, when we look at subsequence, a subcollection, we looked uh, we look on a monotonically, strictly monotonically increasing sequence of indices, and those are the indices that we're going to select. So the indices themselves form a sequence of natural numbers that is strictly increasing, right? And so if we have the sequence of uh, the, the strictly increasing of natural numbers, then this uh, sequence is called a subsequence of a n. And so if uh, this subsequence converges to some limit, then we say that this L is a partial, partial limit of the sequence AN. Okay. So, for example, if we look at the sequence, then we kind of vaguely mentioned that it could be decomposed to uh, converging, uh, convergent sequences, right, maybe. And so one natural way would to select, uh, for example, the sequence of uh, even numbers, right? So in this case, the sequence NK of natural numbers is 2K, right? So uh, for every, so this is the sequence of even numbers. It's a strictly monotonically increasing sequence of natural numbers. And then for A to K, we get this constant sequence. So the subsequence with the even indices is the constant sequence that is equals, equals to one. And of course the sequence is converging uh, to the limit one. And we also could choose the sequence of the odd indices, right? And then we have this subsequence and it converges to minus one, right? And so, uh, this unconverged sequence from it we could found could, could find two convergent subsequences. Right? And so is it true that every bounded sequence of real numbers has a convergent subsequence? And the answer is yes. Okay? And in fact this is one of the most important theorems on, uh, on this course. And this is the Bolzano Verstress theorem. And in this video lecture I'm going to bring or show one of the easiest, I think, known proofs of this theorem, which works only for the real numbers. And there are generalized more, uh, slightly more involved proofs that can be generalized to metric spaces and uh, later to uh, topological spaces, but uh, all at its correct time. So we'll show that the easy, the, yeah, as I said, we'll show the easiest proof of the uh, boltzmann varischer theorem, but we need the following definition, okay? So now we have a sequence and we say that an element AK of the sequence is said to be a peak of the sequence if uh, for every M that is greater than K, that is every element with a bigger index has to be smaller than this AK. And so to see wh what this definition means, it's slightly abstract. We will go into Desmos and see what exactly does it mean. To clarify the notion of a peak, let us look at this sequence. And the sequence elements are plotted uh, here. Those are the orange points. And those uh, those lines, uh, those purple lines, is just, not purples, but this uh, 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 blue lines or whatever. Uh, those are just to indicate the height. Um, it's just for illustration purposes. Though, but the value of the sequence is uh, those orange points. So we see that this sequence is oscillating between those values, right, as we see here. And okay, so we want to demonstrate the notion of a peak. So for example, this element is a peak. Well, why, you asked, because all elements that follow it are smaller than this element. Well, how about this element? This one is not a peak because still there are infinitely many elements that are smaller than this element but not every element that comes after it is smaller than this, right? Uh, and if we look at this element, yeah, then this element is again a peak because every element that comes after it 
is a strictly or strictly is smaller than this. So this one is a peak, right? Because everything that comes after him is smaller. Similarly, this one is not a peak because not everything that comes after it, this one is bigger and this one is bigger. So this element is not a peak of the sequence. And so for this sequence, I think that um, you can see that all those elements here that are on odd uh, with odd indices, they are peaks. And so for this particular sequence, we have infinitely many peaks. And it's a nice observation that we can make. If we have infinitely many peaks, then we're going to have a convergent subsequence, right? Just take the sequence of the peaks, which is an infinite sequence, right? And so this one, the first one is the peak, and therefore it has to be the biggest one because all that follows it has to be smaller. And then the second peak, right, is smaller than the previous peak because all that comes, so all that comes after him is smaller than him, but uh, it has to be smaller than the previous peak, which is everything out because everything after that comes after this has to be smaller, right? And so we, when, whenever we have infinitely many peaks, we can find a monotonically decreasing sequence. This observation will help, help in, 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 in the proof. It's actually a very useful fact. So whenever we have a sequence with infinitely many peaks, we could find a monotonically decreasing sequence, right? And well, just, just to say, uh, if we have only finitely many peaks, then we will prove that in this case we can find a monotonically increasing subsequence. Okay, so I hope this was clear enough, and uh, hopefully now the notion of a peak of a sequence from this abstract definition is somewhat uh, clarified and is more clear now. Now, hopefully, the notion of a peak of a sequence is intuitively more clear. A peak of a sequence is such an element of the sequence such that all all the elements that follow it that come after it with bigger index are smaller or equal than equal to the element. Okay, so now let us continue. So uh, let us prove the following lemma. So uh, we have observed that if we have a sequence with infinitely many peaks, then it has monotonically decreasing, then we can find for the sequence a monotonically decreasing subsequence. And if it has infinitely many peaks, then we can have a monotonically increasing sequence, subsequence. Okay, so let's prove it. So suppose that the sequence has infinitely many peaks, then, well, let nk, let's just arrange the indices of the peaks, right? It's a, a strictly increasing subsequence of the natural, natural numbers. So let's, let's us arrange the indices. And this is a strictly increasing uh, sequence of natural numbers. And therefore, it has a corresponding subsequence. So the uh, a, a and k is the case peak. Okay? That's how we choose the subsequence. And now, uh, uh, yeah, we, we have already said that this is strictly increasing a sequence of natural numbers. And now we consider the sequence of peaks, right? And since a and k is a peak, right, every element is a peak, but it means that all elements with bigger index must be smaller or equal to it, because if it's a peak, that everything that follows it has to be smaller. And then we have that for every k, a and k, will be greater than a and k plus one. Now remember that the index of this sequence is actually k, right? And so this means that this sequence, a and k, is a monotonically decreasing sequence. And therefore, we were able to find a monotone decreasing sequence. Now, suppose that we have only finitely many peaks, right? Then what does it mean? Well, finitely many. So let n be the index of the maximal peak, right? So we can choose n1, right? Uh, any num natural number n1 that is bigger than n, and set a and 1 as the first element of the sequence that we are constructing. Now, this element a and 1 is not going to be a peak because all the peaks has index which is at most n. So a and 1 is not a peak. Well, what does it mean? It means that it, it is not possible that all the elements that follow it are smaller or equal to it, which means that somewhere there exists an element which is going to be bigger than it, right? And so now suppose that we have inductively uh, we're able to construct this sequence. So it's just for uh, this inductive step is just for the rigor. A monotonically increasing sequence a and one up to a and k with this n one greater than uh, than n 
and and two is greater than one, etc., uh, up to n k, right? Well, because the algorithm is pretty simple. A in one is not a peak, then there will be some index, right? And the element with this index will be bigger than a in one, and then we'll call it a n two. And then for a and two, we will be able, a and two is not a peak, then somewhere is gonna be an element bigger than this. And that's the algorithm for construction. And now we use the induc induction to prove it really rigorously. So now suppose inductively that we're able to define the sequence, we need to show that we can extend it to a monotonically uh, increasing sequence, right? So we'll prove that we can find define the next element. And the idea is the following one, choose a, a uh, yeah, and k is uh, this element and k is bigger than n by construction. So this element a and k cannot be a peak because all peaks have index at most n. So there exists an index, call it m, that is greater than n k, such that a uh, m will be bigger than a and k because if a and k is not a peak, that somewhere somewhere out there will be an element with an index that is uh, bigger and will be bigger than this element. And so we'll choose uh, n k plus one to be this m, and then this element a n k plus one is going to be bigger or bigger or equal uh, than a n k, right? It's always actually preferable to write bigger or equal because when you write strict inequality, you have more chances of making an error because when it's big and you're writing uh, uh, bigger or equal, then you know you're you're safer. Okay, so for this. From this follows that we can define a, a monotone increasing subsequence in this case, right? And so now we are actually arriving at one of the easiest uh, proofs for this super important theorem, which is called the Bolzano Weierstrass theorem, which says that uh, a n plus one, yeah, let, let, sorry, let a n be a sequence, bounded sequence of real numbers, then this sequence has a convergent subsequence. So think about it, it's uh, the bolton weierstrass theorem says that every bounded sequence of real numbers has a convergent subsequence. And now, well, uh, I would like to say that we have in mathematics a law of conservation of hardness. And let me explain what I mean by that. I mean that if we uh, prove something, uh, some hard result, uh, then, you know, there is some amount of work that we need to do. And, you know, uh, with elementary tools, it can be hard. And if we give a really easy elementary proof, that means that we maybe use some advanced tools. So now the reason that the pro this proof is going to be particularly easy is that we've already done all the preparative work that is important. So we've proved, uh, we've actually made many small steps. So first of all, we've proved that uh, every monotonic uh, sequence, every monotonic sequence has to be uh, and bound, it has to be convergent. And for this, we heavily exploited the axiom of completeness, a super important property of the real numbers. Uh, so that's that was one step. And then the other step was with those peaks and to analyze the peaks. So if we have infinitely many peaks, then we ha can find a monotonically decreasing sequence. And we have if we have uh, finitely many peaks, then we can find monotonically increasing sequence. And that's going to be basically the proof, right? So let uh, n be a bounded sequence then it either has finitely many peaks or infinitely many peaks. There is no other case, right? So if it has finitely many peaks, then by the previous lemma, uh, uh, it has monotonically increasing uh, sequence because we've, we've proved it, right? So since it has monotonically increasing sequence and the sequence is bounded, then every subsequence of the sequence has to be bounded, right? So we can therefore, in this case, find a monotonically increasing subsequence, which is bounded, and therefore it has to be convergent by the theorem that we have proved. And this is it, this is it for this case. Well, and in the other case, if it has only finitely many peaks, that proof goes unchanged. Then by the previous lemma, I mean, we've put the work previously, it has a monotonically decreasing subsequence. And since it has a monotonically decreasing subsequence and it is bounded, then the sequence has to be convergent, right? And so in any event, in, in every case, there must be a subsequence of a n that will be convergent. And so this this is the Bolton virus stress theorem. This is, I think, this is the easiest proof known to me. I mean, we've done some preparatory work uh, previously, and this theorem would not, uh, here we exploit the 
order that we have on real numbers and we use the monotonicity, something that would not hold for general, uh, more generalized spaces such as metric spaces or, or topological spaces where we do not necessarily have some natural order. But we will have other versions of this proof that will generalize to more complicated spaces. But for real numbers, this is like a really easy proof and hopefully it will be also easy to remember. So hopefully it was you, were, you will be able to construct or will have a logical hierarchical order or how to, how to prove this, this easy proof for the Bolzano virus theorem. So first step is that uh, every convergence sequence has to be bounded, that we, what we've proved initially. Then every uh, monotonically increasing sequence and bounded above has to be convergent. And similarly, any monotonically decreasing sequence and bounded below has to be convergent. And this follows from the completeness axiom and from the existence of supremum and infimum. So for a sequence that is bounded above, it will be converging to its supremum, provided that it's monotone. And sequence that is bounded below, provi providing that it's monotone decreasing, will be converging to its infimum, right? And now, for every sequence, uh, we, we have proved that either it has a monotonically increasing subsequence or monotonically increasing subsequence. Oh, sorry, monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing subsequence. We have proved it by analyzing these uh, Lewis peaks of a sequence. And therefore, since every, every sequence has a monotone, uh, monotonically increasing sequence or monotonically decreasing subsequence, if the sequence is bounded, then it's going to, ha going to have monotonically increasing, uh, either increasing sequence unbounded or monotonically decreasing, and therefore it's going to have at least one convergent subsequence, and as a result, you know, infinitely many convergent subsequences, because every, you can change like the initial elements, any finitely elements can be changed from, from the sequence, and it will not affect the convergence. So there you go. So for every sequence of real numbers that is bounded, there is a convergent subsequence. This is the easiest proof known to me of the Bolton of Weierstrass theorem.